called Deep Sea Diver, and I'm here to teach you how to play Always Waiting. I think what's fun about this song and special is just kind of the use of, this is getting into theory world, just inversions and how that can really change the tension of a song. So instead of here's a regular B, and this is the first chord of the song, which is a B in first inversion with a D sharp on, bottom, on the bottom. There's your D sharp. Yeah, so it just has a different feel to it. Then the next chord would be a B minor with a D on the bottom. So it's first inversion. And then the third chord is an F sharp over C sharp. Second inversion. And then it goes to an A sharp minor over C sharp. So those are the four basic chords of the verses. The way that I play it uh, live, like I said, I don't finger pick it, I, I use a pick. It's just a bunch of triplets. Da 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 da. And um, the way that I do it is I do down, down, up. And another thing that I like to do in the verse that also creates tension is playing with uh, the tempo of it, where it's not dragging, but dragging certain, like sliding into certain chords. So for example, it's like slow down a little bit and then kind of slide into, just like very subtle. chorus and this one you can start sliding up the neck a little bit more to B to a D and then end it on an F sharp over C sharp second inversion it kind of looks like an E chord but on the ninth fret and same thing it's just triplets and then into the first turnaround that goes back into the verse. And this is some of like my favorite uh, inversions of score. This is just like a B7. Played over an F sharp 7. Actually, I let it string ring out. It's just these first two. So that's like the first dramatic moment of the song. And one of the things I really like utilizing, I think it's because I... I uh, I like to pretend that I, no, I play bass, I can play bass, but I, I do my palm muting thing a lot with, where you're laying into something, but you're also muting it at the same time, um, and giving it a different, a different feel, so like, letting off, it has a different attack to it. and then all that's left is the outro, which is totally different than everything. I've been doing triplets the whole time. And uh, once you get to the outro, which is basically the chorus chords, but uh, it transitions into just bar chords here and a different kind of strum. So my right hand, I'm still doing that triplets kind of strum, but it's like a, a full, instead of picking, it's a full strum. One, two, three. So I'm giving an accent on the da 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 ba ba. With with strumming, I think what uh, kind of loosened my strum was, you know, this, I try to use like a combination of wrist and arm, like when I'm strumming. But for this one, it's predominantly just a wrist movement, kind of like opening a door or something like that. That kind of movement. And 
what helps me with it is uh, holding my pick. It's a like tendency to want to like really grip on it, but then you get kind of like a harsh, stiff sound. And so um, I just hold my pick pretty loosely. Kind of looks like a an okay sign the way I hold my pick. I'm sure there's like a more proper way of doing it, but uh, that's the way I like doing it. And one of the things too that helps accent that part without, you know, not only just the up strums, is just slightly bending those notes a little bit and it, so it gives it a different character down here. So it's like. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, I like to play with the, the pitch a little bit.